In our long year of collectively dealing with a worldwide pandemic, many of us have found new and unique ways of entertaining ourselves while staying as far away from other people as humanly possible. While some of us have binge-watched everything on Netflix or learned a weird new hobby, the person at the center of the new game in Rays of the Light has come up with an idea that I hadn't even considered. He's decided to visit an old, abandoned building in Russia in hopes of learning its many secrets. And while the result may be a short but effective first-person horror game with a surprisingly relevant message, I still think I did the right thing by barricading the door shut and binging every episode of BoJack Horseman. Right from the start, In Rays of the Light is full of mysteries. Why is our hero just standing there watching static on the television? Why would he visit an abandoned office building in Russia? What happened to this place to give it that distinct, bombed-out look? And seriously, where is everybody? These are just a few of the questions that we'll uncover while searching rooms, picking up useful items, and reading the many handwritten letters left by those who used to work there. Now, although the first thing that we pick up is a rusty pipe, it's worth mentioning right away that this is not an action game. There's no combat or platforming, and Rays of the Light is all about exploring the building and its surroundings, all while attempting to find the right keys and items needed to open up new areas and continue the investigation. In that sense, this remake of The Light plays out like an overly simplistic graphic adventure, complete with a scavenger hunt and a number of puzzles to solve. If nothing else, this game nails the atmosphere and mood of this empty part of Russia. Even without jump scares or gore, the horror elements work because you're fully invested in the eerie location. There wasn't much of a setup or even a path to follow, yet I immediately wanted to explore every part of this office building compound looking for clues. There's a real sense of dread and sorrow filling every room and hallway and the letters only helped to add context and fear. I was on the edge of my seat with tension for most of the game, yet I wasn't fully sure why. A lot of this is because of the effective world building and creepy music that helps to push the game over the finish line. Although it clocks in at only an hour in length, I would still call In Rays of the Light a slow burn. It definitely takes its time setting up the pieces, allowing you a chance to live and breathe in this world before the weight of the game bears down on you. There is one absolutely amazing section that is more frightening and impactful than almost any other game on the market, something that is made all the more disturbing when you understand the full context of the situation. That said, I did find the game's ultimate message to be a bit heavy-handed. Don't get me wrong, I ended up agreeing with much of what developer Sergei Noskov said in this parable, but there's no doubt that it's laid on real thick at the end. It's not subtle at all, to the point where the game flat out tells you where it's coming from in one of the two endings. The added exposition felt wholly unnecessary, since the rest of the game does a really good job of cluing you in on what's going on. It's also worth mentioning that the gameplay is really sluggish and slow. Almost as if our hero is constantly walking through molasses. He'll easily get stuck on the slightest curb, requiring us to use the jump button at some very questionable times. There is a run button, which you'll need to use almost every time you go upstairs. You'll need to gain a little momentum every single time you go up an incline, which, let me tell you, is incredibly frustrating when exploring the building's multiple floors. I was also disappointed at how little there was to do in this adventure. There aren't very many items to pick up or story beats to hit, so it's not going to take very long before you've seen and done everything. In fact, I suspect it's possible, if not easily doable, to complete the game in well under a half hour. The longest part of the game involves scavenging for keys, coins, and other important items. If you can find those early on, then there's a clean path to the end that almost feels too straightforward. Even with the slow burn, I wish the developers would have added more to do and collect. The credits begin to roll just as the game was picking up steam and getting good. 
On the other hand, in Rays of the Light does not overstay its welcome. It tosses you into a world and gives you just enough time to poke around. By the time you're bored, the game is over and you're off to speedrun it for the second ending and easy achievements. Even with its faults, I'm going to look back at the game fondly, mostly because of the length and impactful story. It's priced at a mere $8, which isn't that bad for a 90 minute experience that'll stick with you long after the game is deleted off of your system. That's more than I can say about a lot of much longer games I've played recently. In Rays of the Light may be a bit on the short and simple side, but it's also an effective little horror game with at least one truly chilling moment. The abandoned world that Sergei Novskov created will suck you into the story and make you want to investigate every inch of the office building compound. Which is good, because a lot of this game requires patiently exploring every room for useful items, letters, and clues to the mystery. Sure, some may be frustrated by the slow burn and heavy-handed message, but don't let that keep you from being guided by the light. Hey, thanks for watching our review. If you liked what you saw here, then you should know that we post new reviews and features almost every day. Now, here's the question I have for you. What is the scariest location found in a video game? I mean, look, this abandoned building is definitely creepy, but what are some other scary locations that you love? Let me see your picks in the comments below. In other news, I'm currently working on reviews for Space Otter Charlie, Who Needs a Hero, Fate of Kai, and apparently there's a socially distanced version of Half Past Fate. Oh boy, and let me tell you, that's not even the half of it. We have a lot of games to get through, so do me a favor and click that subscribe button and support what we're doing here. Until then.